Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last episode, we got into mechanism and built our first mechanism machines. We also built the excavator from Immersive Engineering, which can give us passive ores. And we built this automatic farm to fuel our biodiesel generator setup. Between the episodes, I've added this extra layer onto our farm here. This is another temporary setup, but I wanted to have expanded room to grow things like dugonia and cloudberries, things that we use in our spells. As you've seen at the beginning, I also crafted another spell called Fey Light, and I have this augmented with the blue light, which is pretty cool actually. It did cause my game to crash once, so I hope that doesn't happen again. But basically, we can right click at, with the cost of some dugonia and create a little light. So I want to get away from using these torches, and this thing is pretty cool. So to accommodate the extra cost of spells, I would like to upgrade our herb pouch here to the next tier called the component pouch. And this component pouch is very similar to the one we had before, except it's just bigger capacity, I believe. So the goal for this episode is to complete the Twilight Forest. So to create the portal, we need Baycock's Bloodied Stone, HOP Graphite, Stalacrape, and Brown Dye. But rather than looking for a jungle to get cocoa beans, we can actually do this transmutation ritual from Roots. So to perform this ritual, we need some standing stones. And for this, we just use some runestone with a piece of chiseled runestone on the top. And the recipe for this requires these materials. Uh, the living arrow, the chiseled runestone, and the amethyst we have. However, we need to grab some moon glow, which looks like this, and some fey leather, which we can get from shearing a number of different animals here. Okay, horse, I need your leather. <laughs> My gosh, this is going to take an incredibly long time without time in a bottle. We need a dead bush from this sapling. In the meantime, let's also craft a third spell, which is the Radiance spell. So the Radiance spell is actually a damaging ability. And once we imbue it into our staff here, we can now see that the Radiance spell becomes available. So let's select this on, I guess, the hotbar 3. All right, let's try this spell out. Oh, is it just a hold? Oh, well, the, the animation looks a little bit underwhelming. Let's see how much damage this thing does. Oh, that's actually decent. Wow, this is cool. This is awesome. I like this. And it looks like it only consumes fuel here when we actually hit something with it. And finally, we, we have our dead bush. Let's transform this thing. So we just need one more component for this transmutation ritual, which is the moon glow leaf. Which we can also make into seeds and plant so that we don't have to craft it again. So now we have the bush planted and we have everything we need for this ritual. Let's light it up. Hopefully this works. Oh yeah, we got our cocoa beans. Nice. So with this, we can craft our Twilight Rock, and we have access to the Twilight Forest. But before we go fighting a bunch of mobs, I think we should upgrade our armor. And for that, I would like to try out this Roots Sylvan set. And each piece of this armor set takes my favorite material in the game, <laughs> this treated leather. Uh, but the rest of the stuff isn't too bad. This is a upgrade from the steel set though. But by this point, we have enough steel. Oh, look at that, we already had six left over. <laughs> That's perfect. So we can craft our helmet. The boots, the leggings, and the chest piece. Alright, let's see how we look. Wow, <laughs> very interesting looking armor set. I like it. So with this we have 7 bars of protection. How much did we have with the obsidian? Obsidian was 5.5, so it is, it is a little bit better at least. And I wonder, can we make an enchantment table at this point? Oh we can, this is easy. I'll need to go and grab some more obsidian though. So we crafted our enchantment table, and I threw some enchants on this sylvan set. They're not the best enchantments, but uh, it's better than nothing. I also read here in the quest for the armor set that it can actually repair itself over time. And our root spells also have an 8% increased chance to consume no spell ingredients from our component pouch. So now I think we're ready enough <laughs> to tackle the twilight forest. Let's just jump in. We'll probably end up dying, but uh, I'm not exactly a hardcore player. <laughs> So I think the portal is just default, except instead of the diamond, it's this twilight rock. Let's find out what the twilight forest has in store for us. And we're in. Alright, let's first of all mark the portal. And wow, we got lucky. <laughs> we already spawned next to the hydra. Alright, not bad. Let's make sure that our sky solar actually works here. As I know the twilight forest does disable flight. It looks like we can make use of this thing. Let's not waste any time though, let's try to take out this Hydra. We can use our Radiance as well. Oh, this doesn't actually deal as much damage as I first thought. 
Oh, come on, stop running away. Alright, this isn't too bad. Our shuriken is decent as well. It gives us a good speed boost. Alright, almost dead. Last hit. There we go. And we got the trophy. Nice. That's one boss down. On to the next. Which I believe is the Twilight Lich. Is that him over there? Oh, I think we found him. Should be on the top of this tower. And if I'm not mistaken, he should be in this room. And for this guy, we have to reflect his bullets back at him, as he is invulnerable. And apparently also deals quite a bit of damage here. Yeah, we should be careful. Okay, let's <laughs> let's run a second. Let's get some regen going. And I did find this golden apple. Let's use this as well. All right, that's three hits. Two to go. Oh, he's in the last phase. Okay. Yeah, so from here we can just damage him. Let's use our Radiant spell. Alright, we almost got him. Just have to keep an eye on our HP there. Oh, half a heart! Oh no! <laughs> oh no, how are we gonna get our stuff? Oh, wait a second. Oh, we have apparently respawned with our equipment. I'm not sure why that is exactly. But <laughs> I'm not complaining, let's go back and get our stuff back. All right, we nearly made it back. Just have to climb this tower. All right, let's first of all get our grave back. And last few hits on him, we got him. Nice, did we get the trophy? We did, okay, two bosses down. That wasn't quite as smooth as uh, smooth as the first one. Let's see if we can chance our luck at the third boss though. And yeah, I can't imagine doing Twilight Forest without this flight by now, this would take forever. <laughs> And you know what, before we continue, let's make sure that we pick up the quests in this area. So it wants us to collect some torch berries and a raven feather. So some torch berries. I bet you wish you were a raven chicken. <laughs> I can't find these stupid ravens, where are they? You guys aren't ravens either. Aha, found a raven. We can actually hit it. <laughs> There's our quest. So next we need the map, which actually requires a, a crafting table. And uh, uh, yeah, we don't have a crafting table here. So I decided to come back to base here to craft the map. Let's also pick up the enchanted book that the quest gives us for the armor. Oh, and we get a choice of prote projectile protection or blast protection. I think I'll take the projectile protection. And let's put this on a couple of our armor pieces. And let's also grab our map. And you know what? I think we'll actually grab another bow here as well. I'm going to use these shadow bars from Divine RPG. And this lets us make the shadow bow which is apparently 2x faster and has infinite uses. And it's fairly cheap, all things considered. Oh, infinite uses, but not <laughs> not infinity. Luckily, we did get a power and infinity book from one of the quest rewards, so let's use this on our shadow bow. All right, back to the Twilight Forest. We just have to find the entrance, which should be around here somewhere. All right, so to unlock this door, we have to place our trophy that we got. And I think it's the Lich one. It could be the Naga, to be honest, but... Oh no, it looks like it is the Lich, so we'll take this back as well. And let's go and find the boss. It's been a while since I've done this, like, without being way too overpowered. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> this should give us a chance to try out our new bow as well. Alright, let's see the damage on this thing. Two hit the goblins? That's not bad. Oh, and these beetles are really annoying. Yeah, this bow isn't bad. Oh, a free anvil. Nice. I think we found the boss room. Let's see how this boss goes. I wonder if we can cheese this fight a little and just hide here. I think this is a perfect time to use our radiant spell. Okay, this doesn't seem to be... Oh no, maybe, maybe it is. It's actually alright. Oh yeah, easy boss, easy boss. One left. We got him, we got him. <laughs> nice, three boss down. And we got the trophy and a bunch of armor here. We're going to take it all. All right, guys, we are back. And I think rather than just going straight from boss to boss in the Twilight Forest, let's switch it up and continue our tech progression. And uh, I think we'll come, back, we'll come back to this Twilight Forest since I think just going from boss to boss isn't going to be too interesting.
All right, so the next thing I'd like to work on is getting this arc furnace. And we tried to craft this last time, but we realized that we have ran out of materials. So I did go mine in between episodes, and hopefully we should have enough for this now. So I started gathering up the materials here. We need six blocks of steel, and we don't have any more steel left. But while we were in the Twilight Forest, our excavator was running, and I put some of the ore through this smelting factory already. Looks like we have another nine stacks of iron in here. So yeah, this thing is definitely worth it. I have also set up some redstone controls for this diesel generator so that it doesn't infinitely burn power. So the way this works is we're reading the comparator signal from the HV capacitor here. And the signal is compared with a signal strength of 8 on this potentiometer. So that means it stays around half full. And when the capacitor is under half full, it disables this redstone signal and enables the diesel generator. And that way we don't burn through all of our biodiesel. But we're going to make some of this iron into steel. So we just have to throw it in this chest here and we'll get all of this into steel. Let's actually make some rods and plates while we're at it. And there's our six blocks of steel. All right, just some engineering blocks left to craft. All right, so I think we've built the arc furnace, right? This thing isn't easy to build either and it's a very big multi-block. But we should just be able to hit it with the hammer somewhere. There we go, there's our arc furnace. We have to give this some power, which I think is all on the back here. So we got power, we also need the electrodes that we crafted last time. And now I think we're ready to craft. So with this arc furnace, this allows us to make the industrial leather. But first of all, it looks like we need industrial slime balls, which is clay, salt, beef, pork chop, and slime. I'm not sure if I have any pork chop. And how do we get salt in this pack? Well, the raw beef is easy. Salt generates in lakes as salt blocks, I believe. Yep, there's our salt. Aha, we found some pigs. I know that we could have summoned these guys and I thought exploration would have been easier. But uh, I'm beginning to doubt that. We should have probably just summoned them. Because these guys took too long to find. Alright, so then we can put our ingredients in the arc furnace. And in fact, we can even do six at once. As you can see, this does use up durability on the electrodes. So we will have to make more of these eventually. But we get our industrial slime balls. And our quest. This actually also opens up the slime boots and slime slime. I don't know how useful for the, this will be for us since we have the Sky Soder spell. But you know what, just for completionist's sake, let's craft them. Now we have two ways to fly. I guess we'll keep them in our bags for later. Anyways, moving on to the industrial leather. So for this thing, we need some treated leather, which we made <laughs> earlier on, this recipe again. And we can actually use tanks for this, so it isn't as bad as I first thought, but... Yeah, there is some treated leather. To make it the industrial type though, we need some sugar, some stalacrype, some buffalo hide, and imp leather. The buffalo hide is just made like this with the buffalo's hide that drops from our buffaloes over there. We have plenty of this stuff. Yeah, we have half a stack. And the stalacrype and the sugar are also no problem for us. However, we do need imp leather. And this drops from imps, which I believe spawn in the nether. But in the many hours I've been in the nether, I've never seen an imp, so <laughs> I don't really fancy trailing through there again. So instead, we're going to summon him. And to be able to summon creatures, we need some of these pillars, which I believe are crafted like so. Yeah, some catalyst plates they're called. And I'm sure some runestone. So now that we have our catalyst plates, they have to be within range of our pyre here. And to summon our imp, we need to place down... Aha, we need some eye seeds, some blood gems, and thorn vines. Actually, where do we find thorn vines? I've never seen these before. Hmm, looks like we have to go to the nether after all then. Is this our thorn vines? Let's see. It is our thorn vines. Alright, let me grab a few of these things. So we place our three items on the catalyst plates. Then we have to place stalacrype, wild wheat, rotten flesh, eggs, and bark. Hold on, are we missing one? Oh, it's wild root instead of bark. Okay. And now we get the option for summon creature. Alright, is this going to summon them all at once or one at a time? I hope it's one at a time, to be honest. Hey, there's our imp. Please drop. Aha, we got it. Nice. Alright, how many of these do we need? Gives us eight scrap for every two leather. And how many industrial leather do we need? Hmm, it seems we need quite a lot, so I'm going to summon this guy a few more times. Alright, there's 11 imp leather. Will that be enough? Let's make it an even 12. So now we can make our imp leather scraps, the buffalo hide scraps, add some sugar and stalacrype, along with our treated leather. 
And we have industrial leather. Oh nice, it even gives us some more imp leather. So this leather quest opens up the hang glider. How do we make this? Oh, we need quite a lot of industrial leather for this. Maybe we'll hold off on that actually. So this takes us almost to the end of Immerse Yourself, the chapter 4. And the rest of the stuff is all just optional. I think we will actually have to go back and create some thermoelectric generators just to boost our power a bit, especially as we add and upgrade our machines. But the last quest in this chapter is the Mystery of the Scarab, which requires the artificial scarab body. And this thing we have to craft into the flawless scarab body, and I think this is the item that unlocks the autumn dimension. Oh wait, maybe we need the wings as well? Yeah, I think maybe we need the wings as well, which requires uh, the roots progression, that's right, okay. So these wings we can actually craft by now, and I guess we can also get the scarab body. Oh no, we can't get the scarab body, we need the lamp of cinders, which does require us to complete the twilight forest. And I know the twilight forest is optional in this pack, since we can craft the twilight key. But I'm a bit of a completionist, so <laughs> we're going to do it all. Um, and I should maybe explain the reason I'm trying to get this quest so early. And that is because I would like to unlock our applied energistic system. To get full access to AE2, we need to visit the Autumn Dimension, which is what the Scarab body will allow us to do. So I guess to progress, let's kill the last five bosses. This is going to be quick. <laughs> Are you ready? Next up is the Hydra. One shot. <laughs> Alright, we're back. Do you think we can get our stuff back? Oh no, he's regening health. There we go. We are getting him now. Man, I still don't understand the mechanics on this Hydra. Oh, we got him. Oh, we got him. Nice. Alright, we got the gas next. You think we can get this without dying? I don't know. At least we can skip the tower. Well, that was loud. Alright, that was simple enough. That's a lot of penguins. <laughs> Let's go and meet their queen. Alright, this has to be the, e the easiest boss in here. Seven hits. I've travelled so many miles that I'm, I'm changing time zones here. Where is this last biome? Aha, I think we finally found it. I've been travelling around this forest for 50 minutes, I think. Look how much of the map I've uncovered. We have all of this, uh, thousands of blocks that I've travelled to try and find this biome. Just keeps, <laughs> keeps going, keeps going. Anyways, we need to get there. Aha, we found the giant's house. <laughs> oh, look who it is. You have to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, there's the pickaxe. And the quest. Oh, there's an armored giant here as well. I think this is an appropriate size sword. <laughs> Alright, and with that, the Twilight Forest is complete. We have completed what we set out to do this episode. So I guess we have to make another Twilight Rock. There's our second twilight rock. And now we can craft the twilight key, just with some constant tan. Skipping twilight? No. <laughs> that took me like five hours to complete that thing. And with that we can combine some gold with, with our moon glow leaf to make the lamp of cinders. And now we can craft the flawless scarab body, I think. Hold on, what is this thing? Aquatic pellets? Alright, we need to find some king crab it looks like then. Lots of exploration in this pack, but we'll be getting to tech soon enough, so 
I don't mind doing this at the early game. But where are we going to find some crabs? Probably not on land, huh? <laughs> Alright, we're at the beach. Where are you, crabs? Not the king crab, though. Where's the king crab? As far as I know, there's no summon for this crab. Uh, and we are about a thousand blocks away, and I still haven't seen one. Hmm. Aha, we found our king crabs. Let's hope we get, we get enough of this stuff. We don't have looting on our swords, but uh, these guys took me <laughs> like half an hour to find them, so... Uh, Hopefully they drop the things we need. Very tough mobs as well. Alright, I don't see the pellets that we need from that guy. Please drop them. How many we got? We got six. I mean, oh, we need nine. Oh, great. Okay, so... Let's hope it's not going to be another 30 minutes to find those crabs. Aha, we got another two. Hey, we got the pellets. Only one. <laughs> Only one. This guy dropped enough, finally. So with that we can craft our aquatic pellets. And to get the flawless scarab body we need the artificial one, which takes some of the industrial leather we made last time, some gold rods, HOP graphite and some of this carapace which I found in one of the chests in that next to that spawner over there. So there is the artificial scarab body. And the quest. And now I guess we <laughs> make it flawless. I hope, we, I hope this doesn't use the Lamp of Cinders, because we need this again. Okay, it doesn't. Nice. And now we need the Scarab Wings, which... Oh no, this takes bat wings. Oh, are we going to have to kill a bunch of bats? Um, Yeah, all of the rest of this stuff we have. We have to do this Feycraft. And yeah, to put all this together, we need bat wings. And apparently some more Blaze Powder. Well, rather than trying to find a bunch of bats, let's just summon them. So for the bats, we need cobwebs and saplings. Of which I only have four cobwebs, so I hope this is going to be enough for us. So let's light this up and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't fly too far away from us. There's our bat. No wings. Hmm. Hmm, four bats, no wings. <laughs> Okay, it's either getting more cobwebs or trying to find bats somewhere else. And I think the cobwebs will be easier. No luck. Alright, this is the 11th or 12th bat I've killed. If this doesn't work, I think we'll go to the Twilight Forest to try this. Ah, come on. I can't hit him. Oh, that was... <laughs> oh, that was lucky. Alright, I'm not complaining at that. <laughs> oh, that's right, we also need blaze. Which means going to the nether. Why is it in this game you can never find the mobs you're looking for? Normally blaze are everywhere in the nether. Alright, blaze. Okay, blaze rods, nice. So after some exploration, there is our scarab wings. Make sure to pick this up just in case it's a quest. It is. And then we're going to craft that with the scarab body to make the regular scarab, I guess. We get the achievement, the quest, and I think we finished out this chapter. Or at least the Twilight Forest one. And with that, we've unlocked chapter 7. And I guess this is the Autumn Dimension. So to gain access to the Autumn Dimension, we have to craft the portal. And I believe it's something like this. Surround some sandstone, and then we have to fill this in with water. And then we throw in our scarab. Aha! However, I think we're going to have to save Autumn for tomorrow. The Twilight Forest took me a lot longer than I would have expected. But we made a lot of progress today, even though it might not seem like it. But tomorrow, we're going to start Applied Energistics. And that means fully fleshing out our base here. I'm still not quite happy with the way this is turning out, so there's definitely going to be some modi modifications to our base. I mean, I don't really even know if you can call it a base at this point. But yeah, Applied Energistics is where we can really, really start ramping things up. I'm really looking forward to that. But we're going to wrap up here for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.